Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Pokemon Trading Card Game Oceania International Championships 2018. My name is Ross Gilbert, and for the first time this weekend, I'm delighted to be joined by Kyle Sablehouse. How you doing, sir? Hey, doing well. It's, uh, I'm not Puka, but pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy for me. Just call everyone Kyle, and I know I'm going to get the name right. <laughs> Makes life easier. That's right. We tried to do that for you, make it a little easier for you. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going into the senior final here, and we have got an absolute doozy. And I think the main thing to point out at the beginning, there is a Xerneas break deck in the finals. Yes, this is a deck that I've seen a lot of, actually, in my area, and... I don't know if it's too great. Every time I play against it, I do fairly well. But uh, it just really depends on what uh, meta you run into, and he's found a fairly good one for himself. He's, uh, he's uh, found himself in a meta that doesn't play field blowers. That means you can stick experience shares, and when you get a bunch of energies onto the board, you don't lose when your Xerneas break. No, it is a deck which just relies on getting a lot of energy on the field, and then if you've got enough energy on field, you use Livestream to do 20 damage for every energy attached to all of your Pokemon, and it generally goes pretty gosh darn well, pretty gosh darn quickly. Now, that is Magnus Pedersen of Denmark playing that deck. He is going to be playing against Connor Pedersen, same last name, no relation, no relation. with his Garboda Espeon deck. Yeah, and uh, this is a deck that we also didn't know if we were going to see too much of, uh, but Garboda was pretty well positioned, especially with that Trash Lance. It beats a lot of Buzzwall, and uh, just the fact that you have Espeon means that uh, you can use that Confusion and uh, really mess up a lot of Pokemon. Yeah, you really, really can. Espeon GX, very popular card when it came out in the Sun and Moon expansion. Really seen a lot less play since then. But in a Buzzwall heavy meta game where you've got this big Pokemon, seeing a huge amount of success that has that weakness to Psychic, it means that things like Espeon become instantly just much, much better. And these are not the decks we were expecting this weekend. Yeah. Xerneas Break, not expecting. Garbona Espeon, not expecting. But yeah, in the seniors division, these are the two decks that have risen to the top. Yeah, and uh, I, I, it might honestly just be the two players that are playing it that makes it so important. I mean, uh, Magnus, he has such a great track record um, over in his country, and he's played against some pretty great players that you've seen on stream before, like Jesper Eriksson. Yeah, I went and had a chat to both of these players this morning. I had a little bit of downtime, and I spoke to Magnus, and he said, yeah, I made the final of Danish Nationals twice, including in my first year, and I lost to Jesper Eriksson both times. Then I had a chat to Connor Pedersen. He said, yeah, I made the final of Worlds one year. And you casted that game card. Do you yeah. remember who he lost to? Uh, Jesper Eriksson. <laughs> <laughs> so even though he's not in the final, Jesper is having a little bit of an imprint on this one. Of course, we're going to have a winner in this. One of these players is going to be crowned the Oceania International Champion. And that is a title that very, very few players have actually taken home so far. How do you think this matchup's going to play out? Well, uh, just looking on paper, I see Xerneas Break. It plays a lot of uh, ways to keep its energies. It's, it's got the one experience share, so that's going to stick probably because Connor only has that one field blower. So if you can get all your energies uh, on the board, uh, maybe also Enhanced Hammer is an important card to look at. And just seeing Connor's list, I don't see any Enhanced Hammer. So that means that uh, Double Colorless Energy is going to stick to the board. Uh, Magnus plays three of those. So that's a plus 40 to your Xerneas Breaks attack power, and uh, that's going to really start to add up. It really is. I mean, Xerneas Break is one of these decks which is quite straightforward in a lot of ways. You get your energy on the field, often using Xerneas' Geomancy attack, which allows you to attach two fairy energy from your deck, one to each of two bench Pokemon. Then, like you say, use double colorless energy, which counts double. Use experience share to keep the energy on the field, and it's a very straightforward deck. If you get enough energy on the field, and you keep the energy on the field, you are getting a one-hit KO against absolutely anything in the format. But I had a chat to Magnus, and one of the things he said was, if I don't get enough energy, if I don't get a good setup with this deck, it doesn't matter what I'm playing against, I generally don't win. Yeah, well, he does play some ways to make sure that that uh, setup does uh, start off pretty well for him. He does have three Fairy Garden, and uh, usually uh, being able to swap out your Pokemon and make sure that you can use Geomancy often and early is going to come out on top. But we could see a secondary use for this. When Espeon goes to confuse you, you can just free retreat your way out with that Fairy Garden, and uh, that was just 30 damage. There was no other effect. Yeah, when you can get around that confusion from Espeon GX's first attack, that is always a very, very useful thing indeed. 
30 damage plus confusion for one energy and let's not forget the energy evolution Eevee yep. you attach a fairy energy to Eevee even if it's on the very first turn of the game you can ignore that whole have to wait a turn to evolve rule you can just evolve straight up use that attack and we often see this in the early game from these Garboda decks let's just confuse with Espeon buy myself a couple of turns force my opponent into some awkward decisions I think fairy garden is going to be quite a big card in this game but of course Connor's playing three copies of Parallel City yeah that can be scary especially uh, when you're trying to put down so many energy cards generally you want to spread those out as much as possible so that one Pokemon can't get targeted down and all of your energies leave the board uh, but if Magnus has that information that all these parallel cities are going to come into play, we might just see him just stack energies onto multiple Xerneas and uh, maybe a, a, an, an Oranguru sitting on the bench or a Tapu Lele uh, GX on the bench just won't have any energies and he can find his way around that. Yeah, it's going to be a difficult decision. I mean, the, when you get to this stage of the tournament, generally both players know what they're playing against. I say I had a chat to both players, and both of them I asked the question, do you know what you're playing against in the final? Of course both of them I, did. I would hope so. <laughs> they knew their opponent, they knew the deck, but more than that, they probably know. I mean, at this stage, Magnus probably knows that Connor's not playing any Enhanced Tanner, and Connor probably knows that Parallel City is going to be a big card, so we'll probably see Magnus spreading his energy around three of those bench Pokemon rather than five. Now, I did say that Xerneas Break is quite a straightforward deck, but I don't want anyone to mistake that for being an easy deck to play. Absolutely. I love Xerneas. I have really tried to make Xerneas Break work. I have played it online countless times. I am not good at playing this deck. I understand how it works, but there's those little decisions about where to put the energy, how many Xerneas to get out, when to attack with which Pokemon. And although there are a lot of decks I feel very comfortable playing this Xerneas deck, it's one I've personally had trouble with making the right decisions in the past. Straightforward does not mean easy. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it can be, I mean, if you're if you're going to bring it to this level of competition, then certainly he definitely has an understanding of this deck. Uh, I know Joe Bernard is a player that you said has, um, he's been playing this Xerneas Break deck a lot. So uh, maybe he's looked to see how some of the, the, the higher master level players have played this and gotten an understanding from them. They absolutely do. Now, the good news is we are ready to meet our players. First up, we do have Connor Pedersen. He is an American player. Uh, as we see his profile here, he got top eight at the World Championships this past year. He was runner-up at Worlds in 2016, and he won both Fort Wayne and Florida Regionals in 2017. So a player that is absolutely no stranger to success, I think it's fair to say. Definitely. And when we casted him uh, playing against Jesper in the World Championships uh, not too long ago, he had some very high-level play, and it was very exciting to watch. So definitely looking forward to seeing how he pilots this Espeon GX deck. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting game. It's a deck with a lot of options. You've got the Espeon e GX. You've also got Espeon EX. You've got the Trash Alange Garboda. You've got the Garbo Toxin Garboda. A lot of decisions to make. And when I spoke to Connor, he was very, very confident that he could play this deck. He said there aren't many games that you auto win, although Boswell's quite a nice one. Yeah. And there aren't many games that you auto lost. But Connor has chosen this deck because he said, I am a good player. I am confident in my ability. And I believe that I can be any deck put in front of me because I can outplay my opponent. Yep, and over on the other side, we are going to have Magnus Pedersen. Uh, he is playing his Xerneas deck. We see Xerneas break there, the feature card, uh, and he has a pretty long list of accomplishments as well. Then uh, just in the year of 2017, he was able to uh, obviously make his way into the top eight here. He has a top eight in the Liverpool regionals and in a special event. And, of course, you see their 2016-17 EU leaderboard rank 1. That means he's literally the very best player in Europe, or at least in that time frame, judging by championship points. He was number 1 in the entire world. And I'm sure I didn't need to tell you this, Kyle. You don't get to number 1 in the entire world unless you're really good at this game. Uh, yes, I believe that is the case. We also see at the bottom there the Xerneas that Geomancy is going to be a focal point of his deck, getting all those energies into play as quickly as possible. So Magnus definitely going to be eyeing up early Geomancy. And we are going to see the first couple of turns from Magnus. That really is his optimal play. It's just going to be, hey, I'm going to use Geomancy and search for a couple of energy. And then I'm going to use Geomancy and search for a couple of energy. <laughs> and when he's got enough energy on the board, he is going to be off. We, of course, said that, you know, that Espeon GX is going to be trying to confuse. But then, of course, 
it's a single energy attack. You've got free retreat of Fairy Garden. There are a lot of interactions which are going to be very exciting in this game. And I think we're pretty much ready to go. We're going to see the prizes coming down now. So we get to see Connor putting out his prizes first. And we see a double colorless energy. But only one, that's fine. For the time being, of course. And we're okay. Yeah, two tools is maybe a little bit awkward when you're playing a deck with Garbodor, but uh, maybe we can see those come back down. But uh, it could stop things like Oranguru, uh, but it is in the prize cards, so don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one copy of Oranguru in the discard is slightly disappointing. There's no artillery here, but we are off now in the seniors final of the Oceania International Championships, and it looks like Magnuson is going to be taking the first turn. And he's got two Xerneas on the field. I think we're going to see a lot of Xerneas in this game. Yeah, that's a fair assumption here. I <laughs> uh, don't see too much else in the rest of his hand. Does have a Max Elixir. And yeah, he's just going to pass the turn there. A little bit awkward for him. And now it's over to Connor's side to see if he can get a little more going. That was a very bad start from Magnus. The only supporter he had in his hand was a Guzma. But there's not even any bench Pokemon on Connor's side of the field, even if he wanted to use it. Good news here is we do see this energy evolution coming in from the EV, and that means that you attach a psychic energy and you immediately get to search through your deck and grab yourself an evolution of EV of the same type as the energy you attached. In this case, it is Espeon, and the good news is because Connor's going second, he's going to be able to Psybeam straight away on turn one. Yeah, this may have been a nod from Magnus attaching that energy to his Xerneas on the bench. He already knows that uh, this... Xerneas is on in the active spot is going to be confused so might as well uh, not commit any energy to it just yet No, and he is going to be looking for a fairy garden next turn He's going to be looking for quite a lot to be perfectly honest if he can get that Xerneas out of the active He can get a geomancy off get some energy on the board But at the moment he does not have the cards in hand to do so now the good news is Connor has got that Espeon and Seems to be asking Magnus about a number of cards in his hand and that's the reason why that is a fairly painful Professor Sycamore, discarding a double colorless and a Garboda, but you do not play an end when your opponent clearly has nothing in their hand. Yeah, it's a wise call there from Connor. He's been in situations like this before, just wants to make sure that he's playing to the optimal level here. Does find himself a Trubbish, so maybe he gets to work on that Garbotoxin, or if he wants to find Trash Alanche uh, as well, uh, this deck with Xerneas plays so many different items. Yeah, he's got a lot of options there, and that, you know, Trash Alanche is probably going to come in at some point. Now, that was an incredibly good top deck there. He does actually get himself a Fairy Garden, and he's got a Fairy Energy in hand. That means he is going to be able to attach that Fairy Energy to the Confused Xerneas, and that will give him free retreat to start using Geomancy. As we see him hit a Max Elixir, one of the issues here is, although Geomancy does accelerate two energy, it's to each of two bench Pokemon, Magnus doesn't have two bench Pokemon right now. Yeah, I think he might actually be eyeing up a Rainbow Sphere with the Guzma just to find a, uh, a card out of his prizes. Maybe that'll be a supporter which can help him get out of this awkward spot. That would be an option, Rainbow Spear. You see 100 damage if you discard an energy, and you've called it exactly right, Kyle. We do see that Guzma come down here. He takes the prize. He's going to get an extra card, which is big, but he also takes that Trubbish, so he knows there is no Garbotoxin coming down this turn. Yep, he was able to find a Guzma. Not the supporter that he wanted. He really wanted something that would help him draw out of this awkward hand. So after using a Guzma, he draws himself a, a Guzma. Yes. <laughs> Not ideal. And we do see the Ultra Ball coming down here from Connor. Discarding an Espeon and a Psychic Energy, but he's already got an Espeon on the field. Now that is, of course, the EX, not the GX. But the EX there really... It, it, gain, it earns its money, so to speak, by devolving. Taking away some of your HP so that you're then knocked out by the amount of damage on you. Although you can devolve a Xerneas breakdown to a Xerneas... The difference in HP is not that large. I think it's 150 down to 130. So it's almost certainly not going to be a huge interaction in this particular game. Connor choosing to get rid of the Espeon EX, and he's actually grabbed himself a Drampa GX with the Ultra Ball yeah. and a Trubbish with a Rescue Stretch. This is going to be a big wheel. Uh, I, I, I think he can set that up for himself if he chooses. He also has a Sycamore in hand, so 
Uh, it just depends on uh, what he sees off this Thickamore. He could just retreat and grab himself 10 cards, and he knows his opponent doesn't have N, or he would have played it by now. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the safer big wheels out there. Magnus could always top deck an N, but the chances of that are rather small. And it's got to be a little bit upsetting if you're Magnus, you're drawing nothing, and Connor goes, well, I'm going to play my entire hand down. I got zero cards. Oh, I got one card in hand. Professor Sycamore for seven cards. He then gets that Drampa. He gets those two Trubbish. And we even see another Eevee going down on the bench here. For everything that's going wrong in Magnus's start, it's going right in Connor's start. And instead of a big wheel, we just see another Psybeam coming down there. 30 damage and confusion. Yeah, I, I mean, he drew pretty well off the Sycamore. He didn't even need to use Big Wheel, so might as well save that GX attack. Maybe he could find a divide in the future. Uh, he is starting to get a little bit of damage spread onto these Xerneas, and that might soften up for some knockouts in the future. That's going to be very handy. We do see Tapu Lele coming down with its Wonder Tag ability. It's going to search out a supporter card here, and this is going to help Magnus absolutely get rolling. Now, the good news is he's got a Fairy Garden in hand, so as long as he can find himself one fairy energy this turn he will be able to free retreat the active Xerneas then he will be able to get that Geomancy going he has got two bench Pokemon here so he's going to be able to start getting those energy out and start really setting up he's had a slow start to the game but this is where he might start making his comeback yeah we see that field blower that is the only field blower uh, I believe that he plays so he is going to remove two tools off the board and find himself seven cards and he's really going to start looking to get Geomancy uh, to get some energies onto this board here, would love to find another supporter as well, and there it is, he finds Sycamore, so very helpful, uh, that Tapu Lele. And that hand from Sycamore was absolutely beautiful. He's got a Sycamore ready for the following turn, he's got an energy for the Geomancy, he gets a third Xerneas, so when he Geomancy's here, the energy is going onto two different Xerneas, and he even gets a Xerneas break if he wants to break Evolve one of his Xerneas, so could not ask for much more for that Professor Sycamore to seven. Yeah, and I love the fact that uh, Magnus here decided to attach his energy to an already damaged Xerneas before he goes in with this Geomancy. This means that he's going to have a clean Xerneas to receive an ener a fairy energy here, and that one could potentially be his big swinging Xerneas break in the future. And we do see there the energy being spread around, and this is what Xerneas decks do. Livestream, the main attack of Xerneas break is for two energy, so you don't really ever need more than two energy on a Xerneas, so you spread it around. I don't need a third energy on this Xerneas. I'll start putting it on a Tapu Lele. Maybe at some point that Tapu Lele becomes an attacker and actually starts taking prizes. Either way, spreading the damage around, absolutely the right play here. Yep, and uh, over on Connor's side, it looks like he's going to give us an N. Uh, that's going to drop Magnus's great hand that we saw him draw off of that Professor Sycamore. And now it's up to Connor to start finding some tools of his own. He, right now, he's uh, he's doing a little bit of work with his uh, 30 and Confusion, but Fairy Garden's still in play. He'd really like to see a Parallel City here, honestly. We know one is in the prize cards. Yeah, we, that would be big. And actually, just to go back to, you know, Connor's, I think, second term, he had actually, or third term, was able to use a Guzma to take out that Trubbish. That was actually really, really big, because had he not taken out that Trubbish, Connor could maybe have gotten a Garbotoxin Garboda, such that that Tapu Lele would actually not have been able to come down, although he did actually have a Field Blower at the time. So, a lot of different interactions here, but we see these players making the right moves and giving themselves every opportunity to get back into the game, Good news for Magnus, he's finally got something going. And that end, I don't think he's going to be too upset about it because he remembers those first couple of turns when his opponent ending him would have been a dream scenario. Absolutely. Connor, he's taking a look over at the discard pile, just trying to count how, how many items have been played along with just what has Magnus done this, this game. And the answer is <laughs> not much, and the item count is pretty low. Yeah, that Trasher Lance does 20 damage for each item in your opponent's discard pile. It's a great late-game attacker when your opponent has played a lot of items, or if your opponent has had to overextend to get some key KOs. But when your opponent's kind of played a Max Elixir and a Field Blower, it is, shall we say, significantly less damaging. So here, we're probably just going to see a continuation of this Espeon. And one of the advantages for Magnus here... Geomancy does no damage, which means there's no damage Pokemon on Connor's side of the field. So Drampus Berserk is only going to be doing 80 damage, which isn't enough to get 
get a KO on a 30 damaged Xerneas. Had he had access to Berserk, Connor could get a KO here, but he doesn't because Geomancy does no damage. Yep, I think we are going to see Big Wheel now. He can get himself a nice big hand. A little awkward for Connor that uh, he used his Energy Evolution Eevee and I think his Espeon was in his hand, actually. <laughs> he wanted to get the energy down there so that he can threaten to potentially Psychic in the future. That's going to be a great way for him to answer some Xerneas or Xerneas Break, uh, getting a lot of damage down. But uh, yeah, he just had to com uh, do the Energy Evolution anyways and just say, oh, maybe it's prized. And it's a little bit of a mind game, actually, for <laughs> Magnus. <laughs> yeah, these are the things you have to do when you get to these high-level tournaments. It's all a part of the game. Now, we do see Big Wheel GX coming down here from Connor. He's going to shuffle his hand into his deck, get 10 new cards. I think I saw an N in Magnus's hand a moment ago. If there is, he's definitely going to want to play that N because if you let your opponent have a new card of 10 hands, it is extremely likely that they are going to have access to whatever they want in the future, and that is not something you want to let them have. Yeah, Connor, he didn't get to use Big Wheel earlier because he already had a, uh, a pretty good hand. He didn't need to. And finally, Magnus is holding on to that end right at the perfect time for him. So he is going to be able to take advantage of uh, pretty much wasting uh, Connor's GX attack. That is always fun. When you get to waste your opponent's <laughs> GX attack, that is always a nice bonus. Now, we do see Magnus. He's getting a bunch of energy on here. He's got two energy on the Xerneas. He gets a double colorless on that Tapu Lele. He's actually kind of quietly gotten seven energy into play. That means Livestream is currently doing 140 before the choice band. He's up to 170. That's quite a lot of damage. So the question is here, I mean, if he could hit, say, a Max Elixir, he'd actually be doing enough damage to get a one-hit KO on that Drampa GX and go down to three prizes surprisingly quickly. Yeah, and, and it's all thanks to that Fairy Garden that's out in the, in, in, on the field. That means that he's going to have free retreat, and he doesn't lose any of these energies. But he would have to find that Max Elixir first. Instead, he found all the Fairy Energies. <laughs> Not ideal. Free Fairy Energy, a Xerneas break, and I believe it's a supporter of some description there as well. So didn't get the Max Elixir, so we're, I don't think we're going to see a live stream here. He doesn't have enough to get the KO. So it's likely here we'll just see another Geomancy. Of course, the later you get into the game, the more you Geomancy. And that means that those Max Elixirs actually become less likely because the more energy you take out of your deck, the fewer energy are left. Those Max Elixirs, they become a bit of a liability in the mid to late game because you're just taking, and you see there, there's not much energy left in his deck. Three in his hand, two coming out here with Geomancy. Those Max, or maybe only one coming out with Geomancy. Yeah, this is actually really smart of Magnus. I think he shouldn't attach an extra energy to his Tapu Lele. It would fall right into line with an Espeon with the Psychic. If he uh, Guzmas and brings up that Tapu Lele, he'd be able to score a pretty big knockout on the, on the Tapu Lele and remove four energies from play. It absolutely would. Psychic is Espeon's attack, which you can do when you add a double colorless, like we see Connor doing. 60 damage plus 30 for each energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So at the moment, it's doing 150, and there's a float stone, so we know there's no choice band coming down for the moment. A fourth energy on that Tapu Lele would have put it up to 180 and gotten a KO, and that's an interesting interaction. Magnus wants a lot of energy in play, but if he puts too much on his bench Pokemon... Parallel City punishes him, too much on the active, Psychic punishes him. Yeah, it's it's a game of chicken. Magnus doesn't really want to play down his energies, but he needs them if he wants to attack. He doesn't want to make a big board and spread all of his energies around, but then he, d he'll he play into a Parallel City. So it's, it's really awkward for Magnus to interact with this Espeon. And we do see Espeon getting a KO there. Two energy on the Xerneas meant that that attack was hitting for 120. Add the 30 from an earlier Psybeam. Exactly 150, which was enough. We do see a fairly painful Professor Sycamore here. Yeah. Was that just four fairy energy being discarded? That was a lot of energies for sure. And uh, that means that Magnus would love to find uh, one of the uh, super rods so that he can get some of these energies back into play. Because once these energies hit the discard pile, it's not like you're going to be able to Geomancy from your discard. You need to have those in the deck. And we see him draw into a Max Elixir there, but he does just doesn't. 
He's got like one. How I many think maybe, are left? Yeah. I think there's <laughs> two energy left in his deck, if I remember correctly. There's certainly no more than about three. The enhanced hammer's big here, getting rid of that double colorless energy, at least removing the threat of psychic for the time being. But Magnus now finds himself in a position where he's not got enough energy on the field. He's hitting 120 with life stream for the six energy on the board. He's in two hit KO range. And if Connor starts knocking out what Xerneas... What a setup. Look at this. He found the double colorless energy. His Espeon just took damage. That means that Drampa's Berserk is going to line up perfectly with this Xerneas break. Yeah, this is perfect. 150 with Berserk. That is going to be enough here. Yeah, this is a big, big play here. And this is what I was saying. If you lose your Xerneas, you lose your energy. I mean, what's he going to have? A Xerneas with one energy? A Tapu Lele with three energy? That's not how you win this game. Yeah, I think you called it right there. This is going to be very difficult for Magnus. I believe he's already down, what, like eight fairy energies, maybe nine. And uh, we're going to see two Xerneas breaks hitting the discard pile. It's going to be very hard to come back when this Drampa is fully charged and Berserk is activated. I mean, we're back at the stage now where Magnus might even need to think about using Geomancy again just to get more energy on the field. But that Drampa now is doing 150. Drampa is a fantastic weapon in this matchup. It does exactly enough to get these one-hit KOs. And this is the, another big difference between two-hit KOs and one-hit KOs. If Magnus gets one-hit KOs, this doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, and this is why Connor's deck is so interesting. He plays Drampa in a deck that doesn't have any activators for damage. Uh, he doesn't have rainbow energies like we've seen with many Drampa decks in the past. Instead, he just plays Pokemon with a lot of hit points, and it's going to be very difficult for you to knock them out. Instead, he just takes 120 damage and says, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to just take a break and let Drampa do the work. <laughs> that is working beautifully. We do see Magnus coming down with that Super Odd, getting three Fairy Energy back into the deck. And this is going to be big for him. He does have that Max Elixir in hand, which he's going to be hoping to hit here. But he's got four energy on the field right now. That's 80 damage. It's enough to KO that Espeon. And if he had a Guzma here, that could be absolutely huge. Because then Drampa wouldn't have access to the Berserk for 150. As it is, he's just kind of chipping away at these big GX Pokemon. And it's not doing enough. Yeah, this is very awkward for Magnus. He's going to keep uh, trying to get something going. But... Uh, his Pokemon are already damaged, and uh, there's a lot of ways for Connor to score big knockouts here. Even just the Choice Band would be able to knock out this Tapu Lele GX on the following turn. Yeah, that's absolutely big. Of course, Berserk often used in the early days of this format to do exactly that, KO Tapu Lele with a Choice Band. Now, we do see that Max Elixir hitting there going on to the other Xerneas. Of course, Magnus yet to use his energy attachment for the turn, so he could easily put another energy on that damage Xerneas if he wants to go for Life Stream. But then again, if he goes for Life Stream, he's not getting a KO, and Drampa is just KOing the Xerneas back. Magnus is in a horrible position here. Whatever he does, he's losing a Xerneas. So do you get bench Pokemon and go for Geomancy? Do you try and go for those two-hit KOs? I mean, that Enhanced Hammer's going to help. But Magnus is in an awkward position here. Yeah, he's got the Enhanced Hammer now. He'll be able to remove that Double Colorless from Drampa. And connor has been struggling to find Double Colorless. He, the last one he top-decked and... Uh, he's going to have to play a supporter eventually to find another double colorless because he doesn't want to just take a break and use Righteous Edge, although it would be pretty impactful on this Tapu Lele right now, who has a double colorless energy. Yeah, it absolutely would. Do a bunch of damage. What, a bunch of damage? 20 damage. That's helpful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, every little helps. And it would actually put it in range of a Berserk without a Choice Band, but it would get rid of that double colorless energy. And Magnus's deck is one that really relies on keeping energy in play. Of course, we see the awkward interaction there. Magnus uses Enhanced Hammer to get rid of Drampa's <laughs> double colorless energy and then does 40 less damage because of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to not get knocked out immediately by a Choice Band, so uh, it works out for him, but yeah, it is awkward that you uh, you just <laughs> limited your own damage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd like say, needed to be done. You don't yes, want to yeah. just give a free <laughs> KO. But yeah, not ideal, shall we say. So, I mean, Connor here is in a great position. He's got that Espeon on the bench that's got that energy on ready to go. Of course, double colorless is going to be an issue in this game. Uh, we do see that Magnus is playing three Enhanced Hammer, which is more than we usually see. Get rid of those double colorless energy. I believe Connor had one prize. 
if yeah. I remember correctly. Even if he didn't, they've already seen two hit the discard oh. pile here. Actually, I don't think he cares about Double Colas anymore. He's got Trash Lance ready to go, and you can see that uh, Magnus and Connor have been keeping track at the very bottom of your screen with how many items have been played by Magnus. It looks like six pips on that dice, so that's going to be 120 damage. That lines up pretty perfectly with that Xerneas break that already has 30 from an earlier confusion. Yeah, and if he can draw a Guzma here. Now, it looks like Connor actually uses a Tapu Lele to grab a Lily, if I'm seeing this correctly. Yeah, I think he already has Guzma in hand. He might just be playing out another Pokemon and uh, grabbing a supporter for a future turn. Uh, or maybe he just wants to knock out this Tapu Lele right now, and he can uh, uh, take the risk of finding that double colorless energy along with the Choice Band. Yeah, I mean, of course, like we said, Magnus is a Dex or Magnus is, is a deck that wants the energy on the field. And right now, that Tapu Lele's got the most energy. So maybe it would be worth going after that energy. Of course, now we see that energy coming down on the Trash Lanch Garboda. We know there definitely won't be a Berserk coming from Drampa. Can't attack two energies in one turn. But we do see the Lily coming down rather than the Guzma. So we might just see, you know, just that Righteous Edge getting rid of that double colorless energy. Or we might, yeah, and here we go. He could have used Trash Lash to almost get the KO. But I like this. Go after the energy. Yeah, uh, this means that Magnus is still limited in the amount of potential damage he even has available to him. Uh, his Xerneas can hit. 80 right now if he, if he does get another fairy energy onto the board uh tapu lele with the double colors energy can hit for 80 that's not going to be enough to knock out these pokemon that that connor has right now no a choice band would needed to be done to do it now the good news is he does play free choice band so with a choice band here he would actually get the ko on drampa and actually take a prize lead here but of course it's not just about the prizes it's about the position Magnus with a choice band will get a KO, although he will need a fairy garden to retreat the Tapu Lele. But then he'll probably lose, well, he'll definitely lose a Xerneas to a Trash Latch Garboda. And then what does he have left? Yeah, I, I think the Parallel City is something that Connor definitely kept in mind. Uh, just the fact that uh, losing the energy to retreat the Tapu Lele uh, is, would happen means that Magnus has no attacker if this Xerneas break comes out next turn. It's going to be very hard for him to find anything that can attack. The good news is he does get the choice band, but he doesn't get that fairy garden. And that's huge. Without the fairy garden, he's only hitting for 90, which I don't think is actually quite enough to take out that Drampa. Yep, Drampa's dude. currently got eight on there, so that would do 170. Drampa, unfortunately, he's got, well, unfortunately for Magnus, he's got 180 HP. Yeah, this is very awkward for Magnus. He really needed to hit that fairy garden uh, in order to get this play to work out for him. Uh, even his attachment uh, to the Xerneas, instead of going with a double colorless energy uh, and a choice band, uh, kind of affected him there. He wasn't able to find uh, a knockout, which would have been 110 damage to the Drampo. Yeah, that would have been absolutely huge. Unfortunately, not something he was able to get there. And now it's back to Connor's turn. And Connor really is taking the advantage in this game. If he can find himself a double colorless energy, then Berserk will get a KO, even though there isn't a choice band on there. And at this stage, it might even be possible. Yes, because now that that... Uh, now that the Super Rod has been played, there's now seven items in the discard, presumably, which means that you're actually hitting 170 with that Garboda. Although we do see, I think, a Field Blower to get rid of his own choice band. Yeah, he's uh, he's trying to make sure that if he gets end on the following turn, he just draws cards that are impactful. And he's already doing enough damage right now to get knockouts. Uh, so he's not concerned about the choice band on his Garbodor. It's a, a pretty high-level play to just think that far ahead and get ready for a potential end, which may be the only way Magnus comes back in, its, in this game. Absolutely. Now, that does mean there were, of course, a minimum of eight po items in Magnus's discard pile. That's how many would have been needed for the KO. Unfortunately, we don't have an, an up-to-date counter here, so we are relying on the players to let us know. But the fact that they got discarded, I think that's a pretty big sign. Yeah, this is pretty scary for Magnus now. He's eyeing up uh, a Guzma, and I believe he's just trying to buy some time here. Uh, he just wants to accelerate some energy onto the board. He only has one option because he only has one Pokemon on his bench, 
and uh, he's hoping that this Tapu Lele never finds an energy or a way to get out of the active spot. And we've seen this a lot. Now, this was a much better option before Guzma was released in Sun and Moon Guardians Rising. Unfortunately, as soon as Guzma came out, this really, really, really started just going downhill because everybody's just playing, you know, two, three, four more switch cards here. And, of course, Guzma came out in Burning Shadows, I should correct myself. Mm -hmm. But even so, since that came out, it's just you've got more switch cards. So these stalling tactics are just not as effective as they were when everyone played Lysander, which didn't have an inbuilt switch. Yeah, I, I, looking at Connor's hand, he does have a double colorless energy. This means, of course, he has a way to retreat. Uh, he could attack for 60, but I, I think he can just uh, put his foot on the gas right now, uh, use his Trash Lanch Garbodor to knock out this Xerneas, and I don't think that this Xerneas break is going to be able to hit for 120 damage next turn. It's going to be very difficult. He'd have to find a Pokemon, Max Elixir, Double Colorless Energy, or uh, some sort of combination to get three energies onto the board. Yeah, all two energies plus a choice band, but either way, it's going to be extremely difficult to do so. And one of the things we see in these games, when it gets late, do you have multiple options? There's an Espeon that can use Psychic, there's a Garboda that can use Trash Lanch, there's a Drampa that can use Berserk, there's a second Garboda that can use Trash Lanch. Connor has four legitimate attacking threats on his board. Two of them do need a double colorless energy, but two of them don't. And the problem is, Connor only needs to take two more prizes. Magna still needs to take five. I think it's gotten to that stage in the game where Connor just has too many attacking options, and I don't think there's really any way at this stage he just doesn't round out this game. Uh, the only way I see right now is that Connor has five cards in his deck. Uh, he could potentially get stuck in the active spot if he just runs out of energy, and I think Connor's going to try to wait for. Uh, a position in which he knows he can just take two knockouts back-to-back, uh, -back, and that's why he's going to just slow down right here. Yeah, I think that's an excellent play by Connor. He's not in a big rush. This is one of the advantages you have when you're playing, you know, so far ahead in the game. I mean, even if Connor just lets that Tapu Lele get KO'd, he's like, i got four attacking threats, and you've still got to take minimum two KOs to win the game. Connor is not feeling the pressure on this and i think you're right it's all about just biding your time you don't need to take a ko now you can afford to wait a turn or two and really wait until you've got all of those cards in hand and all those options available to you yeah i think the line here for connor is to just pass the turn uh until he runs out of deck and then play n uh and on the turn that he plays n he can use that disruption effect to affect Magnus. Magnus then, if he was holding on to uh, Guzma, he wouldn't be able to bring up that Tapu Lele. He would instead have to find it off of the five cards that he would get off the end. Yeah, and I think that is an excellent point there. Of course, Magnus does play three of those Guzma cards. We don't see things like Puzzle of Time in these Xerneas decks. So he's basically got three options to bring up and try that stalling tactic. The thing is, there's not really much that can be stalled, given that all these Pokemon have energy or float stones. So it really is just, can he find the Guzma? And I think he did just top deck the Guzma there, if I saw that correctly. Yeah. He would be holding on to it, but I think Connor just found his Guzma, and that's what he was waiting for, I guess. Uh, he, knew, he knew that he had one more in his deck when he looked. That, that means he can bring this big Xerneas break up, and that's going to be probably the biggest knockout uh, that he's had so far. And all the energy there goes off of, Ma sorry, all but one of the energy goes off Magnus' side of the field there. And he just passes straight back over to Connor, who uses Trash Lanch. And Connor Pedersen of the USA will take game one in our trading card game Seniors Final. Yeah, that was uh, very wise by Connor. He played perfectly to make sure that he was going to be able to finish that game with some cards left in deck so that he wasn't obviously decked out there. He knew he had one Guzma left that was pretty difficult for us to see up on the desk, uh, just what he had available. But he waited, he found the Guzma, he took the big knockout, and he also had a way to retreat his Tapu Lele if a Guzma were to ever potentially lock up his Tapu Lele in the active and have him deck out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, both of these senior players, absolutely lovely chaps. Like I say, I went and met both of them. And when I chatted to Connor, he said, you know, I started playing the cars look cool. And I love this race. He said, well, I went to league and I started randomly beating people. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, he was like, all right, I guess I should, you know, keep playing this game. And, you know, he, he's got some masters that he trains with and plays with. I think Finnegan Lynch is one that he told me about. And 
He told me that he, he used to keep losing his win and ins. And then he went to Worlds last year and he started 1-1. One, one. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with the Worlds format, you, you can't have more than two losses. So when you take that first loss, these games become much more important. And he found he kept winning. And he told me, since this has been happening, I find that I now win my win and ins. And certainly seems to be, you know, on display here, given that he's made it all the way to the finals. Yeah, both of these players have only taken one loss in the entire event, uh, match loss, that is. So uh, definitely both players, they, they're not used to losing, especially Connor. <laughs> Every time that I see him playing, he's on a big stage like this, and you can see the nerves don't even bother him. He just uh, plays his game, and he was so confident in the way that he finished that mat uh, finished the first game that it's got to be pretty intimidating for Magnus, honestly. I think it really does. I mean, when I was chatting to Magnus, he told me he's not the only one here playing Xerneas Break. He's good friends of a, a chap in the UK, a well-known senior, Kyle Guest, who also played Xerneas, made top 32 with three wins and four draws. So going unbeaten, but not quite with enough match points <laughs> to get himself up into this top eight. And like you said, you know, there were some UK players. Tamal Cameron did bring Xerneas Break to this particular tournament yesterday although he didn't quite see the level of success that Magnus has seen. Yeah, I, I don't think any of the Xerneas players have seen the level of success Magnus has seen. <laughs> he is on the big stage right now, and potentially he's just two games away from being our senior final champion. Yeah, I mean, both these players are absolutely brilliant. And of course, something that really does bear repeating, this is a phenomenal achievement. Only one of these lovely chaps can win this game. But even for the player that, you know, falls just one step short, making the finals at a super competitive international championships. I mean, that is something to put on your resume and be really proud about. I'd put that on my work resume. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely something to be excited about. Connor, cool as a cucumber, though. He already has his setup. He's just waiting for Magnus to get uh, some sort of uh, thing going. And just looking at Connor's hand right now, we get a little sneak preview, and it looks pretty good. Oh, and we don't see a good hand. Luckily, Magnus Mulligan's there. Obviously, he's saying, you know, luckily he mulliganed, had no basic Pokemon, has to give your opponent an extra card. But you know what? His hand was not good. It was very, very similar to his game one hand. And actually, we should mention that briefly because, of course, Magnus had a very poor start in that first game. Absolutely. I don't know if that's completely indicative of how the game is supposed to go when these two matches pair up. It just looked like Connor was able to do exactly what he wanted. Got to put some damage around. Uh, a one-hit knockout was never available for Magnus. And when he did attack for 120 damage, he let Berserk take over. And I don't know if he really had any other options at that point. He had to get going there. So we did see him, you know, forced into two-hit KOing with live stream, And that, of course, activated Berserk. And it's just... This is a deck where you really want to spend a couple of turns getting energy on the field, then going for big KOs. That is the goal here. Now, we do see Connor putting out his prizes. We've got one of each of the Garboda and a Parallel City and a Double Colorless. Does prizes only Espeon EX, but like we said, not a big card in this matchup. Yep, uh, and on the other side, Magnus, he is prizing that one experience share that he plays. Uh, pretty relevant because Connor only plays uh, the one field blower, I believe. Yeah, we do see two of his free choice band prized as well. But we are off here, and the perfect starter for Magnus, he, he has got a Xerneas in the active, and he's got a Tapu Lele, so we know we are going to at least see a better start to this game than we saw in the previous. And actually, he's got his Oranguru there as well. Qu question is, if he plays his Tapu Lele, that's two bench spots used. We know he wants to try and stick to free because of Parallel City, Putting two support Pokemon down straight away, not exactly what he wanted. Yeah, when you do play these support Pokemon, that means that you probably don't want to commit any energy to them. Just to beware of the Parallel City. He could still potentially find some more Xerneas off of uh, perhaps a Professor Sycamore, which he seems to be eyeing up. Or maybe even an N, an N here. Uh, he could, of course, attach it for the turn. And if this N were to provide him with some Xerneas, uh, that would be perfect for him. He could find some Pokemon that he would actually like these energies to go down on. <laughs> we even see uh, Mr. Mime was in his hand, and he doesn't even want to play that down. He never wants the energies on there. <laughs> 
No, Mr. Mime does not have huge HP. It has a great bench barrier ability, protecting your bench Pokemon. But given that Connor's, you know, the only way he hits the bench is with Divide GX, which is dropping damage counters and ignores Mr. Mime. Not what he wanted. Of course, it had to be an end here. He did mulligan a couple of times. Connor was starting with a couple of extra cards, and we've seen all weekend. If your opponent's starting with extra cards, end becomes a priority. Yeah, that can definitely be a disaster. And uh, Connor, he's got multiple ways of getting extra cards. Not only off that mulligan, but we see the Drampa on his bench as well. He, we could see, uh, once again, that early uh, GX flip uh, if he wants to go big wheel and get a bunch of cards and that means that Magnus is already down one N and maybe he doesn't have a secondary one no that is a very interesting interaction because of course as much as you want to play an N after your opponent takes a couple of mulligans I think it's maybe more important after a big wheel GX yeah now Magnus there much better start than last time and he's got one energy on the field but he actually might be forced to play a Tapu Lele next turn just to get himself another supporter. Good news, I suppose, when Connor does play the inevitable Parallel City, no prizes for guessing what Magnuson's going to discard. Yeah, it looks like Connor may have accidentally drawn an extra card off of the end there. It's a bit awkward for him. Magnus, he did find himself a Bridget off of uh, this end here, so he can get some Xerneas down in the coming turns, but that just means that if Connor is able to find uh, a Parallel City this turn, uh, he can really limit the potential for Magnus to get down multiple Xerneas. Well, the good news is Magnus does actually have a Fairy Garden in hand. And one really great play we saw from Magnus, he's stashing that Fairy Garden. He's saying, I'm not playing it down now just so you can put down a Parallel City. I don't need it now. Keeping it in his hand until he needs it. Very, very astute play from Magnus. And, you know, we talked about, you know, the stadium battle. And you don't want to be the first to put down a stadium unless you have to. Yep, uh, and, and as we saw already in the junior division, uh, just drawing that extra card there and looking at an extra card, that means that there is a prize penalty. Magnus is going to accept that, so he gets himself one extra prize. And uh, now Connor's just going to have to deal with that, and maybe he can find some sort of advantage of, with uh, his own end and limit uh, the amount of cards that Magnus gets. Yeah, I think that's going to be that is an interesting one, actually. Of course, the rules were updated recently. Drawing an extra card is an automatic prize penalty. That was updated and made official a few months ago. But it does mean that you can end. There was a friend of mine in the UK once. He, um, he made a big mistake on his deck list. His opponent had three prize penalties to start the game. <laughs> so my friend just went, oh, well, I'm going to end you on turn one. Then you're starting your game with three cards in hand. He drew nothing and lost in a couple of turns, and those three prize penalties actually were the thing that lost him the game. <laughs> I'm not going to endorse the, uh, the prize penalties, but yeah, uh, it's definitely something to think about for sure. <laughs> so we do see Connor here playing that Bridget, getting himself a, looks like a couple of Trubbish, and another EV. He's already got the energy evolution into the Espeon. This is a good setup from Connor. Yeah, and Connor, uh, this might force Magnus to play the Fairy Garden before he wants to. Uh, because he doesn't uh, want to use Geomancy through Confusion here. So it's very smart of Connor uh, to start the resource battle uh, from Magnus. He has to then start using his resources earlier, and Connor can then have the counterplay. Yeah, we do see the Bridget coming down here from Magnus as well, and I'm assuming it's going to be a Xerneas party here. That seems to make the most sense to me. Of course, he might just choose to go and get two Xerneas here. He knows a Parallel City is coming. He knows he's going to want to keep the Ore and Guru for later in the game, so maybe you just go for two Xerneas here, knowing that that Parallel City is only going to knock off the Tapu Lele, and that is what he's done. He's just saying, right, fine, when you play Parallel City, I'll just discard the Tapu Lele. Yeah, Definitely safe. You also can only Geomancy to two Pokemon, so it might as well just be those two Xerneas there that you have. <laughs> no need to get greedy and add a third. No, unfortunately not. I mean, you do want the attackers for the late game, but unfortunately you do have to make these decisions. Of course, Fairy Garden here is going to give free retreat to the Confused Xerneas, and then we get a nice unconfused Xerneas that can use Geomancy without any of that confusion flip malarkey. Yeah, this is uh, a spot where Magnus might want to play his Tapu Lele and grab himself a supporter now. He knows that the Parallel City is probably going to be coming down, and that means that he won't have a bench space available, and he doesn't have any supporter cards right now. No, I think that is an excellent point on your part there. Usually you don't want to play that Tapu Lele too early, but fear of your opponent just going, fine, N. But of course now, this would be a good time to play it, because otherwise you're not going to have space. Interestingly, though, 
Magnus has gone and geomancy and energy onto that Tapu Lele, so it looks like it's going to be the Oranguru that's going to fall should a parallel city come down. Yeah, and that would just mean it's even more awkward for Magnus. He has an Ultra Ball right now, which means he could thin his hand down if he were to draw with Oranguru, but of course, if he removes that with a parallel city, this all being hypothetical, we don't even know if Connor's going to get one this turn. <laughs> uh, that would be really awkward for him. He's just going to have no way to get a any guards out of his deck. Now, he does play three Parallel City, but the rule on stream this weekend has generally been, if we say something's going to happen, it won't. And if we say <laughs> something is definitely not going to happen, because it's too unlikely, they will pull off the combination. I believe it, it's sometimes called, in other areas of broadcasting, the caster's curse. Yes. Yep. <laughs> well, I will try to avoid that as much as possible, but I do have to keep on talking. That is the job. Uh, Connor is going to find himself an N here, and he would definitely love to find that Parallel City. Yeah, that's going to be one card he's really looking for here. Of course, maybe he would pull off a Psychic with the Espeon. I'm not sure that would be the best thing to do, but it would certainly be an option. Of course, he could also divide GX, but, you know, dropping 10 damage counters, it's a much better play when your opponent's got 50 and 60 HP Pokemon on the bench. It would get a KO on that Xerneas, is it really worth using your GX attack for the game just to KO that one bench Xerneas? Yeah, also, uh, uh, we saw right before he played the N, he has the Field Blower, and a, a nod to that Parallel City play is that he didn't even remove the Fairy Garden. He wants to use that Field Blower to remove uh, some of those Choice Bands and Experience Shares uh, and make sure he gets more use out of that. And if he hits the Parallel City right now, uh, that wouldn't have been a completely wasted card. So... Definitely big draw here coming up. and I, He does hit it. Yeah, we see it. It's the very last card. So a <laughs> big draw for Connor. And uh, now it's just up to Magnus's hand. He did, of course, uh, get to see a few new cards, but they look the same. I uh, don't see very much going on. Uh, he's got Enhanced Hammer, Max Elixir, Energy, Xerneas, and a Choice Band. So uh, it's going to be pretty slow for Magnus here. Might even have to keep that Oranguru on the bench uh, when it comes to decision time. Yeah, that is something he's going to have to bear in mind. Connor, really thinking about the energy here. That makes me think he's just going to replace the stadium, and then he's just going to go for that side beam just to confuse that Xerneas. Because he's also saying here, well, now not only have I got you down to three bench Pokemon, but of course now I'm in a great position because, um, yeah, you, you don't have that free retreat option with the Fairy Garden. And we do see that it is the Tapu Lele that gets discarded, and he gets an energy as well. That is a great result for Connor. Yeah, this has been very big for Connor. Also, confusion is going to stick here. Uh, there's no way for... Oh, look at that. Magnus finds himself a Professor Sycamore. Huge draw. <laughs> that means he might be able to find himself that Fairy Garden just yet and continue uh, to put on some pressure. Now he does hit this Max Elixir here, gets a second energy onto that Xerneas on the bench. Of course, when you're playing 12 basic energy, uh, my friend David Hockman, one of our fellow UK ca or EU casters, he's got this brilliant spreadsheet that gives you all the numbers <laughs> for Max Elixir. But put simply, if you're playing 12 basic energy, you should expect to hit three out of four in your game. Well, I'll expect one out of four because I know my luck. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, players tend to be running fairly hot with these Max Elixirs. We've seen it all event with the Buzzwole decks, but now in the Xerneas deck, especially when you uh, use the numbers uh, to get 12, uh, that's definitely going to work out for you most of the time. An interesting draw there. He actually drew three <laughs> double colorless energy when he actually played that there. So good news is if he wants double colorless energy, he's going to have it. Bad news, his hand is three double colorless, one fairy energy, and a Guzma. So he's not going to have that many options going forward unless he's able to top deck something. Of course, one of the great things about using Geomancy is it takes the energy out of your deck, which means there's fewer cards in deck, which means you're statistically more likely to draw into things like your supporter cards. Yeah, uh, my heart skipped a beat for a second. We saw the Fairy Garden come down, and then uh, Magnus was making the decision. I thought he was almost going to go with his Xerneas break and attack into the Espeon. That could have been a disaster. It would have been enough damage to set up the Berserk enough damage to set up the Berserk again with the Floatstone and, of course, a, a potential double colorless energy. Wisely, Magnus knows he needs to get one-hit knockouts, so he went with the, the Xerneas and went for a Geomancy, and he's just going to hope to get enough energy on board to continue to go uh, three one-hit knockouts on three GX Pokemon and try to win this game. 
And that is really the route to victory here. It looks like we're seeing a big wheel GX from Jamper. Yep, flipping over that GX counter to confirm it is a big wheel GX. Connor's going to get himself a new hand of 10 cards. We know that Magnus doesn't have an N, but you made the point early in this game, Kyle. As soon as an N comes down, Connor's thinking, well, there's one fewer N, so that means my big wheel might stick. Yeah, and we've already seen Tapu Lele hit the board, so that means it's even harder for Magnus to potentially find that and go search out an N. So uh, you just got to play the odds, and, and Connor is going to take that risk right, right now. And if it pays off, he's got 11 cards to work with next turn. But Magnus, he uh, he draws an Ultra Ball. He's been drawing uh, pretty timely cards for himself here. <laughs> that Ultra Ball, of course, could get him a Tapu Lele, which could one to tag him into an N if he so wished. I think it's something he probably would want. Now, that Fairy Garden staying in play is pretty big here. If it didn't, Magnus would have to have attached to the active Xerneas and tried to find a break to attack. As it is, he can just put the double colorless on one of his bench Pokemon here, which means he's then able to free retreat that active Xerneas using Fairy Garden and attack with a break on the bench, but he doesn't need free retreat. He's actually just going for a Guzma going after that Espeon GX. Yeah, this is 210 damage, nine energies in the choice band. Connor's just going to count for us, uh, but it should be plenty to knock out this Espeon, and that's going to be perfect. Connor has no way to damage his own Pokemon and set up a Berserk uh, knockout with his Drampa, so Magnus waiting for the right time. He's got enough energies on board, and it's very difficult for Connor to uh, sneak any prize cards here. The only way I can see him removing a lot of energies from the board is to double colorless his Tapu Lele and then Guzma down that Oranguru. A little bit of a punishment for attaching the double colorless to the Oranguru uh, could be happening here. That could be one option there, of course. We do see the Guzma there, so that is absolutely the play here. And like we said, against these Xerneas decks, it's the energy. Energy is the most important resource in Magnus's deck. You need so much of it to really be taking these efficient one-hit KOs with Xerneas. And going after that Xerneas, uh, excuse me, that Oranguru with the Tapu Lele, that just took four energy, or to put it another way, 80 damage off the board. Yeah, I mean, Magnus still has a pretty good amount of, of energies on board. Uh, he's got five there along with the choice band, so a double colorless energy would mean that he could knock out this Tapu Lele, and then he's just down to one prize card. I'm interested to see how many items have been played. Maybe that's Connor's way of sneaking back into this game. He could remove a Xerneas break from the board there. Yeah, that could be something to do here. Of course, what I really like that Magnus is doing, he's got the KO on this Tapu Lele, and that prize penalty earlier in the game could be really, really big. Yeah. Because now Magnus doesn't need to get a big GX KO to win the game. He could KO a 60 HP Eevee, and that would actually get him the win here. Whereas had there not been a prize penalty, he's going after 100 HP Drampa. That's three times the number of hit points. Yeah, and Magnus... He's actually going to put on a little bit of aggression here. He grabbed himself uh, a Professor Sycamore, and uh, that means that he's probably going to have a way to get uh, a knockout here in the coming turn uh, and find himself a win. Uh, he may have been trying to find a Guzma, perhaps. I don't know if he has any more left. Uh, if it were hard to find that last one prize he needs to finish this game, but we'll just have to see what, what he ends up with. He might just have enough energy on board to knock out anything. <laughs> the way it's going, of course, we saw when he used that supporter earlier in the game, he actually drew three double colorless. <laughs> We've seen two coming down on consecutive turns here, and he's still got one left in his hand. So that's an extra 40 damage going, and... These 150 HP Xerneas breaks are really difficult to KO. They're non-GX, non-EX Pokemon, so it's not like you can add 30 damage with a choice band or anything like that here. So they're really big, and we actually see an end coming down from Connor. He might just be trying to use a Psybeam to confuse, but he's going to need a Parallel City if he's going to make this stick. Yeah, that Parallel City is probably the biggest draw Connor has left in his deck. Uh, if he were to find that, he'd be able to... Uh, make the Xerneas either flip to get his attack off or uh, have to retreat. And you never want to retreat with this deck because you want to maintain all those energies on the board. Uh, a Guzma would also be a perfect draw for Magnus. Of course, he's just going to look at one card. <laughs> Oh, and this is where the Scar you know, that KO on the Oranguru, not only did it take four energy off the field, but it also meant, what is it? It's a choice band and a fairy energy. So, I mean, how much energy is on the field there? We've got two, four, six, seven, eight, one, sixty, one, ninety. Even with that choice band, it's not quite enough. 
No, he's only hitting 190 after getting that energy. So, oh, this is an awkward situation for Magnus to be in. He is going to be 10 damage away from getting the KO. And, of course, as we've seen before, if you go and don't get a one-hit KO, then Connor goes, oh, sweet, now I can berserk for KOs. Oh, this is a risky play here from Magnus because he is potentially opening up that Berserk for a KO. Yeah, he. I, I don't know if he had any energy left, if he would have been better off maybe using Geomancy and just uh, trying to play it safe. It would have been uh, at risk to pot potential Guzma plus Psychic for knockouts. Uh, so uh, just going to get the damage on board, though, and hope to find, his, uh, find the knockout uh, next turn. Yeah, that's absolutely big here. Unfortunately, it was just 10 damage away, which is absolutely heartbreaking. He, of course, you know, attacked without a choice ban there. So he only actually did 160, but he could have done 190. And Magnus here, that was an awkward position to be in. And looking at Connor's board, it's all about the Dramper. Dramper is how you get the one-hit KOs here with that Berserk. So, yeah, this is a, a not ideal situation for Magnus. Yeah, I like Magnus holding on to as many cards as possible. This means potentially uh, if he found Ultra Ball for a final Tapu Lele, that would be able to find him a supporter to win the game. So no need to play that choice band just yet. Maybe he can find a use for it later. Maybe it's that just uh, that amount of surprise damage he's going to need to uh, finish off a Pokemon that Connor wasn't expecting to see. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, the other reason you might keep cards in your hand, maybe later in the game you draw into an Ultra Ball. Maybe you can find yourself, say, a Tapu Lele. Now, Magnus does only actually play one Tapu Lele, so that's not going to be an issue at the moment. But maybe there's a KO combined with a Super Rod. If you don't need to play cards here, there's a couple of different ways to go. Maybe you keep it for something like an Ultra Ball, or maybe, like Connor, you play the Choice Band because you don't want to be end. Yeah, and Connor's been playing his his resources perfectly, and uh, right now he's just trying to find the best way to stay alive in this game. Uh, he knows Guzma is going to be a way that he loses, uh, so no no reason to worry about that Espeon. Just get it out and put it on your bench. Maybe he could even play down enough Pokemon in Parallel City himself, remove that threat, but it looks like everything could be knocked out from a Guzma, so no need to worry about that. Uh, Guzma really is going to be an absolutely huge card here. Of course, Connor now. Connor's just going to be taking KOs every turn with this Drampa unless Magnus can win the game. Guzma really is the card he's looking for here. It's an enhanced hammer, which can get rid of the double colorless, but not much else. And a quick correction, I'm looking at Magnus's list. He does play three Tapu Lele. It's just they've got different set numbers, so they're listed differently. <laughs> so maybe an Ultra Ball into a Tapu Lele for a Guzma is something we could see in the next couple of turns to give Magnus this win. Yeah, and I do like playing the Choice Band here. This means that if the Drampa were to just remove the double colorless energy with a Righteous Edge, uh, Magnus could then top deck a double colorless energy, and that would be a perfect amount of damage to finish this Drampa and finish game two of this championship. Yeah, of course, that Tapu Lele really is doing a lot of damage here, and I think you're right. Of course, the other thing, Connor could just KO the Tapu Lele if he finds a double colorless energy. Otherwise, yeah, it's got to be Righteous Edge. You could not leave that double colorless energy on that Tapu Lele. It's actually quite a legitimate threat here, and Magnus has shifted gears. It's gone from, yay, big one-hit KOs to, okay, we're going to two-hit KO, and I'm going to have to play a lot more carefully than I was before. Yeah, this choice ban might actually be an issue for uh, the Drampa for Connor. He really wants to get out of the active spot because right now Xerneas Break would be able to uh, knock out his Drampa. He might have to go for a Guzma here and uh, try to work out a different knockout for himself. Uh, maybe if he removes enough of the energy from the board, uh, perhaps knocking out the Xerneas Break with the Choice Band if there are enough items in the discard pile, Guzma Trash Alanche would be able to help him out here. Uh, it just depends how many items have been played. I would have to assume that by this point, Magnus has played at least six, which is the number that... Uh, Connor needs. Yeah, that Drampa's just a liability at this stage. If he KOs the Lele, that's fine. Xerneas KOs it. If it KOs the Xerneas, that's fine. Tapu Lele um, it knocks it out. And of course, you know, there's no enhanced hammer in Connor's list, so the only way he can get rid of energy is by using that Righteous Edge, but that's just too risky at this stage. 
Yeah, it's very scary for him. He knows that his opponent does not does have no cards in hand, so uh, is reliant on a top deck. But, I mean, any energy means that he can retreat this Tapu Lele and he'd win the game. So, wisely going to go with the Guzma play here. I'm assuming there's enough items in the discard pile for Trash Lance to take a knockout on this Xerneas break. And the Parallel City as well going to remove the two highest damage Pokemon on the board. So, Connor's just trying to do a little bit of cleanup here. That was a great play from Connor. Uses Parallel City to reduce his own bench to get rid of those heavily damaged Pokemon, of course. If Magnus draws a Guzma, it's not going to matter. There's a 60 HP EV on the bench. Although, Magnus would actually need either a Xerneas Break or an Energy to get a KO on that at the moment. There's nothing on his board, and this is quite depressing, that could <laughs> do 60 damage to an Eevee right now. Yeah, this is a perfect play by Connor. He really lined it up uh, very well with his Parallel City, and uh, Xerneas Break is the top deck for Magnus. Uh, he could evolve right now, or he could try to hold on to that maybe for the Ultra Ball. Oh. I think either way, his Xerneas is going to be knocked out, so it doesn't hurt, it doesn't help him to play it down right now. Maybe he can just hold that uh, as a surprise card. I think, to be perfectly honest, I think that's what you do. I think he just has to do 60 damage with this Tapu Lele, and maybe, you know, if that Garboda stays in the active, he can retreat, break evolve, and KO. He does choose to break evolve first, and if that Garboda doesn't get out the active here, Magnus will win. And there is a choice band on it, so there's none of these floatstone shenanigans. Connor's actually going to need a Guzma, and he does play four, but he's going to need a Guzma this turn, or well, that Garboda is just going to be knocked out next turn. And interestingly enough, there's no bench spot for Connor to go and find a Guzma with a Tapu Lele because of that Parallel City. Yeah, this is very awkward. Uh, he does, because Magnus played down the Xerneas, that means that he has an answer. This kind of played around N if Connor were to play an N here. So uh, I guess there are two sides of the coin there. Magnus is going to make the play that says, I have win on board. I don't need any surprises. You need to find a way out of this spot. I mean, if that Tapu Lele goes down, either way, Magnus needs an energy. Energy for Livestream does 60 in KOs, or energy for Rainbow Spear does 100 in KOs. So that break, not quite as, not, not absolutely vital if Tapu Lele gets KO'd. Of course, we don't know how many items are in the discard pile, but here we go. I like that play. Rescue Stretcher to evolve the Eevee, just to say that is one win condition I've just taken off the board for you. Yep, and not even going to play a Floatstone down. Uh, he just wants to throw away all these cards and try to find himself... Uh, I don't know what now, honestly. He might just uh, try to retreat here with uh, double colorless energy, or he's just going to pray that his opponent doesn't find an energy card here. Just one energy would be able to do it. Come on, energy for the win here. It's a oh, Max no! Elixir, <laughs> and that's game. Connor is your seniors international champion from the Oceania region. That was a very, very tense end to the game there. Max Elixir gets you an energy, but only to a bench Pokemon. No bench Pokemon. He was one energy away. Livestream only did 40, and that's not enough to get a KO there. Yeah, we are not going to see a game three. That is how it is going to end here. Connor is static. He is the, our international champion here in Oceania. And, uh, I mean, props to both these players. Magnus played a fantastic game for us, and uh, that was... Just such a wild uh, match for us. Both decks, very interesting, and I love the way that they played out. It was uh, such a wild game back and forth. The Espeon trying to confuse uh, the battle of the stadiums. It's something that we haven't seen very often, uh, and uh, congratulations to Connor. Yeah.